We've all been there. The ice is finally safe, you're excited. You get out to the lake, you walk the however far you need to walk, pull in the sled, you're tired, you get out there and your battery's dead, or your auger won't start, or your heater's not working. Whatever it is, something ruins that first trip of the year and you have to turn around and go home. Again, one of the worst things in the world, but the good news is it's very avoidable. So I'm gonna run through a bunch of things today that you can do to make sure that first time out on the ice is successful. Some of them are pretty obvious, some of them are not, but I'm basically gonna give you a big checklist of things to do, things to check, things to get prepared before your first time out on the ice to make sure that it goes off without a hitch and you are ready for that first trip. So we're gonna jump right in number one and that is charging batteries. More and more with ice fishing, there are things that are running on batteries. Some things that you might need to charge are your electronics, your live scopes, your flashers, your underwater cameras, um, but there might be other things too, like augers. You know, I have my augers plugged in right now. Headlamps, lanterns, camera panners, like for your underwater camera. Any power packs that you might have to either charge your phone or charge other things. Getting those things charged up. Um, if you wait for a little bit longer, the ice is even a little thicker, you might wanna make sure your snowmobile or your ATV is charged because those can go dead over summer very quickly. If you're doing any self-filming or photos, make sure your film cameras are charged up, whether it's GoPros or whatever it is. Those are just a lot of things that take batteries that you can charge right now. Some things might be like AAA or AA batteries, whether it's for fans in a fish house or for lights in a fish house. Getting those things checked and making sure you have extra batteries for those are also super helpful. Number two is to re-spool your lines. Check them to make sure they are good to go. Um, when they sit over the summer, it's very easy for lines to get kind of crusty, especially if you're on a kind of braided line, if it gets frayed. Mono line can get very fragile. So make sure you're checking those lines, make sure they're good to go. Um, you know, if you're a little more frugal, you might be able to re-spool it backwards, you know, with braided lines, so that way you can get some of the fresh line first that hasn't been used. But I like to be safe and I like to re-spool my lines every year. And in fact, I'm actually re-spooling all of my rods right now because PC Fun just came out with their ice fishing rods. These just came out this winter and I am super excited about them. Haven't got a chance to use them yet, but obviously just checking them out, they seem again like PC Fun always does just such a good bang for your buck I mean they're anywhere from about 35 to about 45 dollars or so depending on the style or the grips or whatever again they way outfish their price point um, right now they have kind of the lighter side as far as panfish maybe some smaller walleyes some of those styles of rods right now, but they're gonna be expanding that lineup in the future. And so far, like I said, I haven't got a chance to use them yet, but so far I'm very impressed with the build, some of the features that they have. I'm not gonna to go too into detail right now. Go ahead and check those out. I have links in the description below. You can use code TJE15 for 15% off your order. But another one that's very important is kind of getting your tackle organized right now. I have kind of my tackle set out here. I've got some new stuff from Euro Tackle that I'm gonna try out. And basically I'm just kind of taking them out and checking the hooks. Um, a lot of times when they sit in some of these, if there's moisture or whatnot, hooks can get rusted. So make sure you check those hooks, see if they're rusted, see if they're gonna break. Just make sure you're having some of your stuff in as good a shape as possible, get all the moisture out of it. And then I like to organize kind of by the style because by the end of the winter, I don't know if you're the same as me, but by the end of the winter, all of my stuff is just kind of all over the place in different boxes. You know, I try to keep different species or different um, tactics together in the same boxes, but it gets kind of scattered. So I like to reorganize, just start fresh. Moving on to number four, and that is to start any engines that you have, um, whether it's an ATV, a snowmobile, an auger. Um, run some additive through there, whatever you prefer. I've used a few different things, had success with a lot of them, but just kind of get those running. I like to just let them run for about 20 minutes or so, just kind of get everything lubed up again, ready to go so you don't have any question marks. So make sure any engines that you might have, get them running, get them started up, just because if there is issues, it's very important to get them in sooner rather than later. That way they're prepared for ice fishing. Nothing's worse than you get out and your snowmobile's not running and now you have to wait until almost the end of ice season before it is ready depending on the area that you're in and depending on what the demand is for things getting fixed. Number five is not necessarily a glamorous one, uh, but it's an important one nonetheless and that is to wash any ice fishing gear, you know, especially your bibs, your jacket. You know, if you're like me and you're fishing, you know, pike or bourbon or stuff like that, late ice, and you don't wash it at the end of the spring, uh, that can be a dangerous situation when you come in the fall and you're getting all your gear out, you're pulling it out of the garage or the totes or whatever it is, um, but make sure you get that stuff washed up if you haven't done it in the spring. That way it's ready to go, you're not getting any stink or anything breaking, and like I said, it's, it's even better for your gear because it helps it to last longer as well. So get all that stuff, washed up, that is number five. Moving on to number six, kind of a phone one, that's scouting some new lakes. And with technology nowadays, it is so fun. You have so many opportunities to scout, even when you're just sitting at home, to kind of find new spots. You know, a few of these, one of them I really like to use, I use it like 
uh, Minnesota Lake Finder. The DNR website for Minnesota has this. I know some other uh, states have this as well. And if you're looking for a more in-depth dive into how I do that, make sure you check out my fall crappie fishing video. I go into detail of how I kind of break those lakes apart, how I look for new lakes. But it's a, t it's a great tool to use in order to find new lakes. Maybe some of these lakes that you might not be able to get to with a boat. Maybe it's a hiking lake. Maybe it's a backcountry lake. But you can kind of get and you can kind of see what size structure is. You can see numbers. Get an idea of some of these lakes that you might want to try. Or maybe it's a lake that you fished before and you want to see. Does it have a good crappie population or a good walleye population? Maybe you haven't targeted those species on that lake yet. So Minnesota Lake Finder is a great one. Another thing that I like to do, I like to go sit in my boat or pull my ice unit out and look at my hummingbird looking on my charts and just kind of looking for some new areas. This is a great time to finally just take some time and just really break down some of these bodies of water and kind of look for some of these things that you might be looking for early ice. Another tool that I'm really looking forward to that can really help the scouting process is a new app um, from Omnia Fishing. I believe it's called Premium Pro and essentially what it is, I'll actually just pull it up right here. So when you pull up the app, you have a lot of different options but essentially I'm just going to kind of go through the map overlays that you can do and on here you have water clarity, water temperature, um, pretty soon they're going to have some Navionics maps on there, they have the sea maps, some different other charts that you can use, they have bottom hardness, ve vegetation, you can see they have weather layers, wind, weather radar, precipitation, air temperature, lightning, storm cells, all that kind of stuff is stuff that you can overlay on either a standard map um, like that or a satellite map and it's just another tool that you can use. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail with that right now um, because in my next video, I'm actually gonna go in depth into some of my early ice walleye locations and I'll go a lot more in depth into that app. But if you're looking to check that out, I'll put that in the description below here. Uh, that way you can go check it out, see if it's something that you're interested. They still have a little bit of work to do. They're still working out some of the kinks it seems and they're still getting some of that information dialed in. But as they get it dialed in, I can see a ton of uses for it, especially this time of year when you're maybe not able to get out in the boat or you're just sitting at home looking for some way to be able to scout. This being able to see some of that vegetation, some of that bottom hardness, um, once that gets a little more dialed in and get some of those features, get a little more detailed, it is going to be very, very useful. So again, um, in my next video, I'll talk all about early walleye locations, dive into that app a little more, and just some other things that you can do um, to find some of these early locations. So that's number six, taking some time to scout some new lakes um, or even taking a little more in-depth look at some of the lakes that you've already fished. Uh, moving on to number seven, number seven is to get your pro filled. I don't know how many times that I finally get to ice season and whether it's from grilling in the summer or whatever it is, my propane is empty or next to empty. And whether you're using these little one pound tanks like this or you have your bigger tanks, make sure you get them filled. Um, sometimes filling those one pounders, it's super convenient. It's a way to save a lot of money, but it does take a little bit of time. So being able to do that on the front end instead of taking time out of a fishing trip to get those filled up or whatever it is, get those propane tanks filled. That way you are ready to go for the season. And moving on to number eight, this one sometimes a scary one but that is to take your houses out and set them up you know check to see if any mice got in check to see if there's any holes in the fabric whatever it is if you need to air them out from some of the stink need to clean them out need to patch some holes whatever it is get those houses out set them up see if there's anything that you need to do to make sure that they are ready to go number nine is one that i've been doing a lot more the last couple of years and that's taking this time of year that kind of right before the ice freezes get out in the boat and scout some areas in the boat and you might not even be necessarily looking for fish um, you might be looking for things like bottom hardness, where some transitions, maybe where some weeds, that kind of stuff. Again, not going to go super into detail right now because that's going to be in my next video where I kind of detail some of that. But this is a great time of year to be getting out in the boat, doing a little fishing, trying to catch the fish, but also doing some scouting for the winter. Number 10 talks all about early ice gear. So I'm actually going to flip the camera around to the other side of the garage here. And I'm just going to kind of detail a few things that I have, some gear that I use for early ice that is very important for both safety, but also for comfort. All right, so some key pieces of equipment for early ice. Um, one for comfort, but also for safety. You know, in the midwinter, I have my warmer gear. This is the Explorer Camel from Norfin, and these are the Norfin Yukons, and these are incredibly warm, but it's not necessarily something that I'm gonna wear for early ice. So one of the things that I like to do is I actually have a different suit that I use for early ice. This one is the Norfin Element Plus. Um, this is a float suit. It's a little bit lighter for some of those more mild temps. Um, but it's also a little easier to move in because again, I'll sacrifice some of that warmth, be able to move, especially when I'm walking long distances and having some ice cleats. One of the things I'm really excited to try out this year, um, this is the Norfin Klondike 2s. And as you can see, I'll kind of show you that right here. They have these little ice cleats that flip up and flip down. They have two, one on the front, one on the back. Um, I believe the Klondikes originally just had one. 
Uh, but these are the Klondike too, so they have two, and really excited to have those because ice cleats are awesome and they're important for safety, but they are sometimes really hard to get on, stretch out, and they're just a bugger to remember. So being able to have them built into the boot, being able to flip out or flip on, depending on whether you wanna use them or not, I'm really excited to check those out this year. Again, can't say too much about them yet because I haven't really got a chance to use them, um, but I'll definitely be giving them a try, especially for this early ice time. Again, if you're looking to pick up any of that Norfin stuff, I'll put links in the description below here to both these suits. Uh, make sure you go check them out. You can use my code TJ10 and that'll save you 10% off. It'll also help me out as well. Um, so make sure you go in and check in that one out. A couple other pieces of safety equipment that I always have with me is one, having some sort of spud bar or chisel, being able to check the thickness of the ice. Um, this is one that I've really liked, but really anything works, even something homemade, but just something that you can easily check the ice to make sure it's safe. And another one is having a good set of ice picks, you know, if you happen to fall through, that you are able to help to um, crawl out. And these ice picks, there's a ton of different companies that make them, a lot of different varieties, so you can kind of find whatever fits best. But having those pieces of safety equipment Equipment, um, are huge. Another one is just having a long rope, especially when you're out early ice, it's helpful to fish with someone. I know it's not always gonna work, but if you do fish someone, have a rope so that way you can kind of help each other out if somebody does happen to fall through. Again, you wanna be smart and you wanna take it easy and make sure that the ice is safe, but if there were to be an accident, something like that, you wanna make sure that you are able to get out um, safely no matter what that looks like. So those float suits, the chisels, the rope, um, and any of those ice, ice picks can help for that. So there you have it, a bunch of stuff that you can do to get prepared for ice fishing right now so that way that first time out on the ice is successful. And I'm sure I missed some stuff, or I'm sure there's some things that might be unique to your area or to the type of things that you fish. So if I miss anything, or if there's some certain things that you do, please drop them in the comments below. I would love to have them myself to kind and add them to my checklist of things that I do each year. Um, but I'm sure all the viewers watching this would also love to see your opinion, see some of the things that you, do, you guys do. So make sure you drop those in the comments below. Again, if you are getting out on early ice, make sure you're being safe, being smart, checking the ice as you go. No fish is worth your life. Good luck this ice season. I've got a lot of content planned. I've got some fun trips, some really cool things in the works here for this ice season. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.